and welcome to episode 22 of the Knitting Teaspoon podcast. I'm Lisbeth, your host, and this is a podcast which is all about knitting and some other crafts that I occasionally do as well. Uh, today is July 13, I guess? Yes, 13. 13th of July, Friday 13th. Hmm, hadn't thought of that yet. Hmm, <laughs> wonder what that's going to mean. Um, hopefully not nothing too unfortunate. Uh, in fact, I've had some lovely news today about uh, my job. Um, well, I don't officially have a job yet, but things look like I may be able to sign a contract next week. So once that's signed, I will tell you more about that. But until such times, I will not tell you so much more about that because there is nothing on paper officially signed and anything yet. But things are looking pretty bright and it looks like I might be working in two weeks. Who would have thought? <laughs> so um, I feel uh, quite happy about that today. Um, uh, but I've been pretty tired last week. Uh, I think there's been a bit of a flu going around. My boyfriend has been a bit under the weather and especially with uh, his lung surgery that he's had a few months ago. Uh, that's That's been tough, but um, it, it's going fine actually. He is doing great uh, again. So. I think I completely forgot to mention this already, but thank you so much for joining me. It really makes uh, my day that you uh, take some time out of your week <laughs> and uh, decide to spend it uh, watching this podcast. It, it really means a lot. I mean, if it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be doing this. So thank you. Um, yeah, so let's get into what I've been doing this week. Well, uh, you guys will know that I was talking about a shawl uh, that I wanted to knit uh, last week uh, called the uh, Gerbera. I'm going with Gerbera. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it is a pattern by uh, a person that I've met uh, called Lydia Ornstein. And uh, it's uh, oh, a shawl. And I've shown you uh, a previous version that I've knit of it uh, last week. Well... This is what happened this week and oh my god, it is completely finished, it's blocked. Um, it may look a little bit wonky in the blocking, like in, in, in this section here, because after I blocked it, I decided it was a good idea to hang it over a chair and I completely did not realize that like if you hang it over a chair, which just kind of looks like this, yeah, you're going to stretch out the yarn in two points and it's it's not exactly the same point as where I'm hanging it now with my hands, but um, I could totally notice that there was a point that was stretched out a bit weird from that. And also, I don't have blocking wires yet and I think that might be the first thing that I buy if my job goes through. Uh, yeah, uh, so I, I need some locking wires to make sure that I don't get weird points. Although I think with hanging down properly, they may have stretched out a little already. So I don't know if I can show you this entire thing, but it, it's just huge. I think it's it's like, it's more than my wingspan. Uh, note, my wingspan is not very big because I'm not a very tall person. I know that Dutch people are uh, generally uh, very tall. I believe on average we are the tallest people in the world. Well, everyone except me. <laughs> uh, I'm with the two persons smallest people in the Netherlands, which means that worldwide I'm just slightly below average, I think. Uh, Chinese people, for instance, tend to be uh, quite a bit shorter than the average Dutch person, but I'm more of a Chinese height. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't, I hope this doesn't come across as racist, but I'm just talking about averages here. Um, and uh, in the Netherlands, I'm a very small person, which means I'm, I think I, I'm, a, I'm about one meter 60, or I believe that's like five foot three. So it's not terribly uh, small, but it's not very tall either. So, um, yeah, so I finished this shawl for my grandma and it's out of uh, Lana 
Rosa Marino Uno in Colorway 24. And I think she's going to love it. Um, yeah. So uh, one thing that I didn't really realize when I was knitting this is that because it's a superwash merino uh, yarn, uh, the lace is kind of really see-through. So I, I knitted at a loose um, gauge that was intentional, but I used um, a wooden spun uh, more rustic yarn before and that kind of felt a little together. So in in this yarn, you you can see these eyelets much more clear than in um, in the previous version that I knit, and that's fine. That that's what I intended uh, to do. But these sections are a bit open for my liking, but I think it's okay. So um, my grandma's birthday will be coming up soon, and it's already to go. And I I knit this in. Three? No, four days, I think. So for last Friday after the podcast, I cast on for, for this thing. Um, and you start out in, in the middle here. I'm not going to give away too much details, but you start with three stitches for the cast on. And you end with uh, close to 400 stitches in the end. So the first rows were pretty fast. Uh, I mean, uh, within a day, I think I was through through this, this inner lace section, like, I, I believe the Gerwa, it's a flower. So this is probably like the, the smaller leaves or petals of, of the flower, this section here. I'm not really sure how well you will be able to see this this way, because unlike some other podcasters, I don't have like any flipped screen. So if I want to see what my uh, camera is seeing, I would, I maybe I could put a mirror behind my, my camera, but uh, currently I haven't got a mirror there, so uh, I can't really see wh what I'm showing you guys. But there, there's this smaller petal section here, and then there's larger flower petals going out there, and I'm pretty sure those, those kinds of petals have different names. I'm pretty sure that's a thing in biology, but I'm not in biology, so I don't know about that. So yeah, this is my finished shawl in four days because I, I cast on, I got you around here, I think on the first day. And then on the second day, we went to uh, my boyfriend's dad. He, he had his birthday last weekend. Um, so we had a barbecue where uh, some friends of my bo own boyfriend, but also some uncles and aunts and, and, and uh, some other friends from his parents were there. Um, it was a bit hot. <laughs> I must admit, I'm not a very good person with heat. I, I, I just don't cope with it very well. Please give me the cold. Sweater weather, my thing. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Uh, apart from that, it, it was really lovely. Um, so we, we sat outside for most of the time. And then I, I know that I finished... Uh, First skein on the first day, and then the second and the third one on the second day, I believe. Or maybe I did the first two on one. No, I, I think I did the first skein on one day, and then I started on the second. And I um, did two more skeins on the second day. And then uh, the last three skeins were divided over the Sunday and the Monday. Um, because I'm applying for a job, I'm not really doing anything on... <laughs> Uh, on those days so every day is kind of a weird kind of holiday like you want to be able to communicate with people so you're not going to plan for just leaving your phone and everything behind for for a few weeks but uh, there's not really a fixed plan either for what I had to do so yeah um, and I'm quite happy with how it turned out so yay finished uh, finished shawl and I believe my grandma is going to be very happy with it and it feels good to have it finished uh, uh, quite a ways in time before um, before her actual birthday so then there has really only been one more knitting project that I've been working on and those are my socks um, I didn't work on the summer top this week because 
uh, I just I was wondering what projects I should bring to uh, my boyfriend's parents. So we went there for the weekend. Um, and I thought of bringing the summer top. Uh, and it's a very easy pattern. It's only stock net. But because I'm changing up the design a little bit compared to what I did last year. Um, there, there's a lot of planning involved. Like uh, taking measurements uh, every now and then. And then deciding what stitch count and what increase rates or decrease rates and everything you should uh, handle with. So I didn't feel like uh, doing that because I wanted to be able to be chatty and, and everything. So I decided that this might be a better backup easy plan. And you will see they are now on separate needles. My um, one skein sock <laughs> uh, project. So uh, I got quite a bit further on both of these, uh, further on this one than on this one, as you can obviously see. Um, I'm kind of knitting them concurrently because I I moved my stitch marker to to here, so I I had already finished the heels on on both of them, but I was still knitting a stockinette stitch on that back of my sock. I'm just going to put one down because they are so similar that uh, there's really no point in. Uh, holding both up, it's just going to be annoying for me. So if I if I need a sock, uh, let me get it in shape a bit. So if I need a sock, I start with the with a toe because I I like knitting toe up socks and especially in this case because I'm intending to knit as much as possible from the one skein that I have. Um, so I. I increase for the heel and after I'm done uh, doing the heel, uh, after I am done doing the toe increases, um, I start uh, using a pattern on the front side of the sock, but I leave the back side, the bottom half of the socks, uh, I just leave them plain stock in it because, you know, you don't want that kind of structure underneath your feet, or at least I don't want that. Uh, maybe with some easier textures, maybe possible, but I'm not going to put lace there. So um, I did the lace uh, only on the top part of the sock. And then I start doing my gusset, which is also just in plain stockinette stitch. And I put in a short row heel, um, a kind of tiny heel flap uh, thing here. But um, after I finished my mini heel flap, I continue doing uh, quite a bit of stock in a stitch on the back side of the sock, um, even though I'm just knitting circular or in the round again. Um, because I don't know about you guys, but usually my heels on my socks, they are not as high as, well, my, my shoe will usually bump into my heel somewhere around here slightly above the heel and I don't want to have a texture there because if I have a texture there there's a huge chance of getting blisters so <laughs> I was talking to you about my socks and then my um, memory of my camera was full so I uh, had to quickly delete some old files that I don't need anymore or have backed up elsewhere uh, so that I can continue to talk to you. Uh, and um, I was talking about um, the position where, uh, like, if, if you have a shoe, it, it kind of has like this kind of shape and then it bumps into your heel a little bit. Uh, and it may be as soft as you can possibly want. But if I have some texture on my socks here, um, there is a bigger chance of getting blisters for me and as I like to walk a lot I don't like having blisters on my heels especially if it's not necessary so I um, take the stockinette stitch up a little bit higher above uh, where I end my heel and from there I start knitting with a texture and um, you can see that this texture is just like similar to what I've had on the rest of the leg. Um, I can try to stretch it out a little. Let me just shift the needle a little bit. So once it's worn, it, it will open up a little bit more the, the lacy details of it. 
and you can see that the that I've changed the pattern slightly when I went up the leg and this is not an alteration um, to the pattern so much not not that I don't like the part that's uh, below on the foot it is just that um, and that I need more space on my leg as it gets wider. Now this is not very high up leg yet, but you know I don't have pretty slim uh, lower legs. I don't know about you guys, <laughs> but uh, I have real curves, <laughs> especially on my legs. I don't know what's going on there, but they are broad, <laughs> really. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I I uh, just decided to just. Uh, kind of make the same leaf motif going um, here as I had done here um, but just uh, slightly larger so more of the same in fact um, and that way just to increase gradually I believe that uh, this is about the point where I want to put in another increase I've uh, tried on these socks um, or I, I tried on one sock, my feet are similar enough that fitting one uh, um, should do the trick. Um, but I think that I need to put in another increase. And um, yeah, uh, they are coming along just fine. And one thing that I enjoy so much about working on these socks, now that they are separate, uh, on two needles uh, it doesn't make so much sense to use the uh, project bag to keep them separated anymore so i'm using my hedgehogs again the hedgehogs are back and uh, i i just love these cute little faces they are so happy so adorable and um yeah i'm not really sure how well the colors go together but i i just I just love it. it. It makes me so happy to to look at the cute little faces. Look at that! <laughs> it's it's just it just makes me so happy. Uh, I'm really glad that my boyfriend and I made these uh, um, clay uh, yarn balls a while ago, and um, yeah, I'm also very glad that they're actually being used. <laughs> uh, not not that they weren't used before because I've used them on another project uh, as well, but. Um, sometimes they just stand there being cute and then I forget to use them. So I'm really happy that I'm not forgetting about them now. So that's it for what I've been knitting this week. Um, but that's not the only thing that I've been doing because as you guys will know, uh, this week the Tour de France has started, so the Wheeler uh, event. And although I'm really not that much of a sports person uh at least not as in watching sports uh, i like doing sports but not not watching other people <laughs> do sports um just personal preference um but as you guys will know uh tour de france is the same time as tour de fleece now i don't know anything about the details of tour de fleece but Hearing so many people talk about getting back into spinning uh, made me want to take out my spinning because behind me here in a basket, it was a fruit basket that my boyfriend and I got when he was in the hospital filled with fruit, but uh, after the fruit was gone, we didn't know what to do uh, with the basket. So I decided eh, maybe a nice background piece for the podcast. Um, so I've been spinning uh, dish yarn before and... Um, I'm, I'm not really a professional uh, tie knotter, so you will see these white ties coming out. And I haven't, still haven't washed these, but um, I think about a week before uh, he ended up in hospital, I was uh, working on spinning uh, this yarn um, with a spinning wheel that I got from my grandma, which is the reason that I want to give her a shawl. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I... I was spinning for a sweater and I do have, well, two and a mini <laughs> skeins uh, of yarn uh, from it. Um, I believe in total this is slightly under uh, 200 grams. They are a 50-50 merino um, BFL, uh, blue-faced lesser uh, blend. 
um, by Spinspool and I still had two other braids. Um, I didn't know that I was going to need this thin, light, light fingering weight, actually it is, um, of yarn. And it totally doesn't look pretty with all those multicolored ties. But they came from uh, braids that look like... Well, they look like this when they were all neat and packaged and sold to me. And then um, I, I messed them up and <laughs> made them look more like uh, this. Because uh, from this kind of braid I can just pull one end and then I have one more loop that I can just take a piece off because I finished a part of spinning now so then I will just rip this open a little bit which will make it easier to tear it and um, let me see of course it's not working when you try to do it on camera because that's how cameras work <laughs> um, but yeah, then I split up a little piece. Um, note that you have to keep your hands quite far apart because otherwise you're pulling on one piece of fiber and that just doesn't work. So then I have a piece that's more or less this size. Um, and I just open it up a little bit more because it's quite compacted in the braid and uh, I like it a little bit looser when I spin. And then I get going on my wheel and I think I've inserted a picture of my uh, spinning wheel once before but I will happily insert another picture here and once I've got like this kind of fluff going on um, and I need to remember that I should start from the grey end I think oh my god I already can't remember what I did <laughs> but then I start spinning and uh, this is what I've spun so far uh, this is a merino braid, the other one is a BFL, so that's how I mix them 50-50. Uh, so I have uh, in, in my two ply, one ply is merino and one ply is BFL, and that's what makes the yarn a 50-50 blend. And this is just just a single ply uh, merino, and uh, last bit looks a bit uneven. Yeah, it's, it's not very even throughout, I think, but they are pretty thin singles. I hope you guys will be able to see this. Let me hold it up like that. So that's what my um, what my uh, single ply looks like, and you can see all these lovely colors that were in the braid. So you have the more pink spots and several more gray spots. There, there were some more brownish spots, but you can't really see them on the bobbin. They're probably hidden somewhere uh, underneath here. Uh, this bit is a bit more orange. I don't, I, I don't really remember seeing that much orange from the previous skeins, but I know that there was some orangey stuff going on there. So, um, yeah. Um, and then I will just apply them together. I have no plan whatsoever of color coordinating them. So my skeins will be one big surprise, as you can see here. Like there's uh, a lot of barber polling going on with different colors. Um, and in this section, you can, uh, in this yarn, you can clearly see that there's a lot of uh, lighter colors that just happened to coincide when when um, when plying the yarn, and uh, not so much here. There, there's a bit of barber pulling here, but uh, here, well, it's still barber pulling because it's more of a yellow, uh, orangey color and a pink color, but they are definitely closer together than. Um, some of the barber polling that's going on here and I'm just hoping for the best that it's going to be a pretty something and I don't know if I will alternate skeins because there's such a big variation within one skein I'm not really sure if it's going to matter at all but I'm planning to make a, a vest Are you done drinking? You are a very loud drinker very loud drinker. <laughs> so my pets have woken up and they are drinking, which is not very strange considering the heat here. Um, I'm, I must say it's it's not even 30 degrees I think, but um, the drought has continued to go on, um, so that's a problem. Um, 
I think there there's an entire province. So the Netherlands are split in in twelve parts, uh, kind of like the states, I guess. But um, I think we are more uniform as one country. But then again, our entire country is probably about the size of a state. So so within the state, we are split within provinces and then uh, within communities. And uh, in one community, it's not even allowed to use surface water anymore to water your plants. So for um, just common person uh, like me who wants to water their plants uh, in their garden, that's a bad thing. But imagine the farmers that are not allowed to do that anymore. That's, that's just their harvest. It's, it, it's going to be gone. And... Um, I have some farmers in my family, and I know that this can be pretty devastating to have hardly any harvest <laughs> in, in a year. So, yeah, that's that's tough. But, um, yeah, uh, I, I don't think that this is a very large-scale pro problem. It's very local. Not, it's not my province, um, by the way, that, that was hit by the most severe uh, drought of the country, but... It's still something that's really alarming, in fact, and they don't expect any rain until somewhere midway next week. Uh, we had one teeny tiny rain shower, uh, I think on Tuesday. Not really sure about the day, but there was a little bit of rain this week, but it was just, uh, it was gone before, before it had, had fallen, it seemed like. Uh, so where was I going with this? I, I don't know. Uh, there's still some drought going on in here, uh, which is getting quite intense, so I'm hoping for rain. Uh, and I know that this, this is not something that, that's a common factor around the world, because uh, there's a lot of areas that actually have to cope with uh, quite exceptional rain and even casualties through that. So not hoping for that much rain, <laughs> let's just state it like that, but enough to, um, you know, keep our plants growing, would be nice. So um, that's it for today. So I've worked on my shawl, I've worked on my socks, and I've done a little bit of spinning. Um, and that that's it, I guess. I don't have any uh, big things to share anymore. Oh, uh, except for one thing that's going to be a nice first uh, after uh, my boyfriend's surgery, we are going swimming together uh, this evening. So uh, I really look forward to that. I, I do really enjoy swimming. Uh, he apparently did a fair bit of swimming as well. Uh, we never really sw uh, swim, swim, swim. <laughs> I don't know. Is, is it a strong verb? <laughs> uh, we never did much swimming together though, but um, he's finally allowed again after his surgery uh, to go swimming, so we want to try and see what it does to his lungs um, and hopefully have a nice time swimming and have a little workout that way. But uh, yeah, other than that, I don't have anything special to share, I guess. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I hope you guys have a lovely week. Uh, I had a pretty good week myself. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you again next week. So 